Costco Wholesale is one of the best performing stocks of the past 40 years. An early investor who held their shares from IPO through to today would have made about 300 times their money, and on top of that they would have received their initial investment back many, many times over through regular dividends and from time to time very large special dividends. Costco is also a business that Charlie Munger absolutely loves. He's been on the board of Costco since 1997, and when he's ever given half an opportunity to mention Costco, he absolutely loves to talk about it. Now this is the third and final video in a short three-part series here on the channel looking at some of Charlie Munger's best investments. Of course in this final episode we will be looking at Costco. So if you enjoy the video be sure to hit like and also subscribe but for now let's get straight into some of the details on Charlie Munger's history with Costco and let's also walk through some of the numbers around why Costco has been such a successful investment for Charlie Munger. Now during the first two episodes in this series, which if you haven't seen, be sure to go back and check out uh, the past couple videos here on the channel if you want to uh, see some slightly different style Charlie Munger investments. Uh, in those first couple of videos, we talked about cigar butts, we talked about uh, very deep value, extremely cheap oil stocks, and we talked about Charlie Munger betting very large on special situations and merger arbitrage and that sort of thing. Now Costco is getting much more kind of back towards what we know Charlie Munger for, which is buying great businesses at reasonable prices and Charlie Munger has uh, steadily accumulated Costco uh, over a couple of decades or so at this point. Up on the screen here shows all of the data that's publicly available for Charlie Munger's Costco holding. Uh, like I say he's been on the board since 1997 and I suspect he's had a holding in Costco earlier than this graph shows but this is the data that we've got available and you'll see that Charlie has steadily accumulated shares in Costco over time. And if you're wondering what happened here in uh, late 2010, early 2011, uh, that was actually to do with the transfer of shares related to uh, the passing of Charlie Munger's wife. Uh, Costco had some commentary around that in 2010 when they filed a Form 4 with the SEC. Uh, and even after that, Charlie has continued to accumulate shares. So I don't think Charlie's actually ever sold Costco for reasons of overvaluation or the business not performing as he expected or anything like that. He seems to have just steadily accumulated more and more Costco over the years. And as of the latest data we have in 2022, Charlie is the proud owner, at least directly, of 186,615 Costco shares, which is valued at almost exactly $100 million. Now we also know that Charlie owns a little bit more Costco through at least one uh, foundation, but that 186,000 shares is the core holding, and $100 million is not that significant actually in Charlie Munger's overall portfolio. Uh, for a bit of context, his Berkshire Hathaway position is currently about $2.25 billion, but nonetheless, Charlie loves to talk about Costco and the money he did put into Costco probably somewhere in the late 90s and uh, steadily a bit more, particularly in the early 2000s. It's been a very successful investment for Charlie and there's a lot that we can learn from him continuing to purchase into the business. Now many people of course will know the business of Costco. It is a membership only store where you can buy basically anything. Uh, you can buy it in huge quantities and you can buy it very cheaply. <laughs> and uh, Charlie Munger loves that Costco is basically one of these win-win-win business models. It's an example of what Nick Sleep might call scale economy shared. And Nick Sleep uh, is a UK investor who also for a long time had a position in Costco. And the way that Costco basically works from a business model perspective, uh, a lot of people will say that Costco basically makes very little money from their core uh, retail operations uh, and they make most of their money from Costco memberships and there is actually uh, quite a bit of truth to that. So Costco only marks up products to a maximum of about 14%. Sometimes they will mark up products a little less than that and they are very strict on that kind of 14% limit and you see that flow through in Costco's data where they have a pretty steady 10 or 11% gross margin. And the reason that someone like Nick Sleep would call uh, Costco a scale economy shared type business and the reason that Charlie Munger thinks it's really a win-win-win for everyone is basically as Costco continues to grow they essentially get more bargaining power and more negotiating power with their suppliers. It allows them to uh, buy you know, more product, it allows them to get better unit pricing on those products, 
And since they have, you know, this kind of 14% markup limit, they basically pass all of the benefit of those cost savings uh, either directly back to customers or actually to, uh, from time to time, their employees as well when they pay their employees uh, better than a lot of their competitors do. And of course, the more you're able to do that, the better um, kind of value products you can offer your customers and the you know happy, happier your employees are, the more people are likely to shop at Costco, the more it's likely to grow, and the cycle kind of just goes on and on and on. And Charlie Munger has talked about this quite a bit over the years. He said, uh, Costco has a frantic desire to serve customers a little better every year. When other companies find a way to save money, they turn it into profit. Senegal, which is uh, who is the CEO of Costco, uh, passes it on to customers. It's almost a religious duty. He's sacrificing short-term profits for long-term success. Now coming into 2001, where our kind of records start here, Charlie Munger already had a big position in Costco. And we can see that uh, in the first uh, decade of the 2000s, he probably increased his position about 60% or so. So he would have purchased Costco at a range of different prices. And looking back through Costco's history, it looked like he probably purchased uh, at the absolute low point, maybe 12 or 13 times earnings. And at the uh, kind of higher point, maybe 25 to even getting close to 30 times earnings, kind of at the upper limit. So this really isn't a cigar bud investment, it's a growing business that has uh, great reinvestment opportunities and that is what really generated the strong returns here for Munger. Munger of course been famous for buying great businesses at reasonable prices as opposed to reasonable businesses at great prices, uh, has said over the years that over the very long term for uh, businesses retaining most of their earnings, your return will tend towards the return on equity of the business. And if we look at the return on invested capital for Costco, uh, so this isn't return on equity, return on invested capital uh, will be kind of agnostic of whether Costco had any debt through the years which was kind of pushing up their return on equity uh, but if we look at that history uh, return on investor capital was in the 9 or 10 percent range for Costco in the early 2000s and in the uh, second decade of the 2000s and um, the kind of little bit of the 2020s that we've had so far, uh, Costco has been able to lift that return on invested capital over time to in the kind of mid to high teens. And of course valuation matters, it matters a lot, but uh, the reinvestment engine can do some pretty wonderful things for the underlying business of Costco and of course for investors as well. Now uh, this is actually something that Warren Buffett wrote about in his article How Inflation Swindles the Equity Investor. He talked about about reinvestment engines in uh, businesses and Costco is a great example of that. And um, Charlie Munger probably paid somewhere in the one and a half to maybe as high as three times book value sort of range. He was paying a premium to book value on what was largely kind of physical tangible assets and on the surface of things that can look very expensive. But as Buffett explained in that 1970s inflation article, uh, companies that have the opportunity to reinvest capital can uh, generate really good returns even if you pay a premium to their book value. Think about it like a very high quality or a very high interest bond. You know, Costco has generated about a 10% return on invested capital uh, in the early 2000s, growing now to getting close to 20% returns on invested capital in the second decade or so of the uh, 2000s. And Costco has this kind of weird uh, ability to be able to continue reinvesting capital and, and opening new stores. Now, if Costco was a bond, that would be like having this weird bond that pays an unusually high rate of interest. Uh, that bond would generally sell well above par value in the market if that was truly the case. And uh, this bond uh, with Costco has the other unusual characteristic where you can take your annual interest payments and you can reinvest them at par value, uh, you know, not necessarily at this premium to book. They're able to take your share of the underlying earnings for the business and instead of paying you a dividend, uh, Costco actually does pay a dividend as well, but the proportion of the earnings they retain, they're essentially able to reinvest at really, really attractive rates much more attractive rates than you would be able to if you took your dividend payment and just put it back into some sort of you know dividend reinvestment program. 
So yes, valuation matters, but it's really the strong reinvestment engine that have driven great returns for Costco over time. And Charlie Munger's returns have tended towards what the return on equity is for the business. And he's probably even done a little better actually over time as there's been some multiple expansion uh, from Costco as well. And even as recently as the past year or so, Charlie Munger has continued to be super positive about Costco's business. And he said this at the recent Daily Journal annual meeting. Costco has never traded at a higher price to sales or price to earnings multiple. How should new investors think about Costco given its record run? Well, that's a very good question. And I've always believed that nothing was worth an infinite price. So at some point, even an admirable place like Costco could get to a price where you would say that's too high. But I would argue that if I were investing money for some sovereign wealth fund or some pension fund, and a 30, 40, 50 year time horizon, I would buy Costco at the current price. I think it's that strong an enterprise and that admirable a place. I can't bring myself with my habits to pay these big prices, but I never even think about selling a share of Costco. Costco is going to be an absolute titan on the internet because they've got curated products that everybody trusts and huge purchasing power on a limited number of stocking units. I, I'm not saying I'm buying Costco at this price, but I'm certainly not selling any. I think it's going to be a big, powerful company as long as far ahead as you can see. So there are a few lessons here in this Costco investment for me. Of course, uh, the number one thing that has really driven Costco's success is setting up this win-win-win kind of ecosystem. Uh, being able to attract customers more over time has allowed them to grow, which has given them more bargaining power. They've returned that benefit directly to customers and to employees, um, rather than trying to capture more short-term profits, for example. And it has widened and expanded expanded the moat for Costco. It's allowed them to attract more customers, get more bargaining power, uh, return more scale benefits to customers and to employees and kind of just do this over and over again. And that is why uh, Charlie Munger absolutely loves the business. And I might even play a little clip of Charlie here um, talking about his recent shopping adventures at Costco. I bought at Christmas time a flannel shirt, a bunch of flannel shirts at Costco. They cost $7 each more or less. And it was a soft flannel, and it was better, and so forth. I bought pants, I think they were Orvis pants. And I paid like $7, and they stretch around my waist, and they're partly water resistant, what have you. The other thing that was really on Costco's side when Munga um, built up most of his stake is that it was much smaller than it is today. And it had a very, very long runway and arguably still does have a bit of a runway to continue opening new stores. And that was a great vehicle for uh, earnings that the company generated each year. They could reinvest those earnings at high rates open new stores and continue to build the earnings power of Costco over time. And although it's hard to argue Costco has ever really looked super cheap, uh, that reinvestment engine has generated so much um, extra earnings power over the years that Charlie Munger's return has really drifted towards uh, that great underlying return on equity for the business over time. And the other final lesson here is that when you've got a great business, uh, it often pays just to hang on to it. Of course, uh, Charlie unfortunately had his wife pass in around 2010 or 2011, and uh, there were some shares that kind of left his direct ownership as a result of that. But Charlie has never gone out and actively really sold a share of Costco. Uh, he has very, very few transactions and still probably has generated market beaded returns over the past couple of years just by holding on to great businesses like Costco. So that's it for me for this video and I really hope that you enjoyed this uh, short little three-part series on some of Charlie Munger's greatest hits and some of his best investments over the years. If you want to see maybe one more bonus video in the series, uh, drop some maybe company or investment suggestions uh, from Munger that he's done over time and I'll see if I can maybe do some digging into some of those different really successful investments uh, Munger's done over the years. If I think we can learn anything really valuable that hasn't already been covered, 
covered maybe i'll consider doing a video on it or if there's any other super investors that you'd like to see me do a short series on uh, here on the channel on some of their best investments definitely let me know but uh, i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please hit like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new here but that's it for me for this one and i'll see you on the next video cheers